The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. In the year 2000, Ben Heckendorn built his first mod. We can rebuild it. Smaller. Better. Portable. Since then, he has continued his work, helping those in need with creative new projects. If you've got an idea you'd like to see built, why not send it to The Ben Heck Show? Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. In today's episode, in honor of the Consumer Electronics Show, or CES, we're going to be making a project based off of common consumer electronics that you can just buy from the store. So this is going to be kind of like an old school Ben Heck project. We're going to buy something, reverse engineer it, and make it into something new and cool. Let's get started, shall we? So we're going to do some consumer electronics stuff. And I was thinking, what's a very common, uh, popular consumer electronics? iOS devices, like the iPhone or the iPad. So I think we might try to do something with those. One good thing about both of those devices is they have a very standard plug on them. It's been the same for quite a while. I mean, this plug has been around so long, it even has FireWire on it still. So iPad, iPhone, what do people like to do with them? Gaming's a big thing, but there's no button. So I was looking around to see if anyone had made some sort of controller for it, and there, there were a few things. But then I started looking a little further and I saw that iCade, where you stick your iPad into like this thing, and it's like in a little arcade, and I thought, what if we got one of those, figured out how it worked, then reverse engineered it, and used its circuitry to make a small handheld unit like this. So I think for our first project, that's what we'll do. And then we'll also put some other stuff in here as well, like a mini USB port and a headphone jack and other standard things. So yeah, let's get started. Let's get one of those iCade things and figure out how the control buttons work. All right, so I went and I bought an iCade, which is a fairly, the most standard button thing you can get for iPhone or iPad. At Bed Bath & Beyond, strangely enough. And I started looking at it and it doesn't actually use the cradle, so it must be Bluetooth. And, uh, and I'm not going to bother putting it together. All I want is the circuitry. Yeah, so I guess we could uh, test it first, get it connected, and then uh, take this apart and find out how it ticks. So I have to enter a passcode using the joystick in order to pair it via Bluetooth. So here goes. What? Oh, it timed out on me. <laughs> we'll just skip ahead. Okay, let's see. Here's the passcode. Return or enter key. I did it! <laughs> okay, now that we hooked it up via Bluetooth, I'm going to take this apart and find out what's inside. So, here we go. Man, I hope the circuit board's not too big. It's kind of a big case. I'm gonna guess no, or hope no at least. Tell me your secrets. Oh, good. There's hardly anything at all inside of it. It's actually got some pretty decent arcade buttons. Hmm, impressive. I can keep these and use them for something else. See how they all have a common ground? So wiring this up would be quite simple. Basically, it's a Bluetooth keyboard device, and then the games are mapped to certain things, and uh, that's how it works. Uh, let's see. However, uh, since it's a Bluetooth device, it will require power, so we could either try to use button cells or perhaps steal the power off the uh, iPhone device itself. And it's got a Bluetooth antenna right here. Oh wait, that's not what that is at all. Cut that part out. <laughs> Alright, so here's our four joystick directions. Here's our buttons. This is just a light for the coin slot, so this is irrelevant. There's a Bluetooth module. And we can actually flatten this quite a bit. We'll remove all these headers and uh, make a pretty thin circuit board that I think we could easily fit inside of a, uh, a sleeve or a thing to put around the iPhone. All right, time to rip it apart. Man, this thing's being really difficult, but don't worry, I'll get this jack off. All right, so we've got most of the things removed from this board, so we just make sure it works with these games. So let's continue missile command. I'm just gonna trigger it manually. Oh yeah, there it goes, see? One of these buttons probably shoots, I'm not sure which one. But. All right, cool, so uh, let's uh, break this down a little bit further and then we'll see if we can make a controller around it. 
All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is see if I can power this using the iOS device instead of having to use batteries. I got this little breakout thing, which gives you all the pinouts from uh, iOS device quite easily. I've noticed something on here too. Take a look at this unused section here. It's got transmit, receive, ground, and uh, three volts. So perhaps you can do a hard wire connection between this and your device as well. I guess we'll try it. But you know, as long as we can grab power, Bluetooth is fine. All right, so here's the pinout of, well, it says iPhone 4, so this is the most recent pinout. There's quite a few things on this adapter, which is why there's so many accessories for iOS devices, because there's so much down there. There's uh, audio out, there's um, a standard RX TX line uh, for serial communications, there's FireWire even, there's video, uh, USB, quite a, quite a bit of stuff's down there. But right now, I think, um, we can try hooking up the RX TX lines, uh, see if they work, but if we can just grab 3.3 volts to power our little Bluetooth thing, that would be enough. All right, plug that in. Now, according to the pinout, um, pin one is uh, ground and pin 18 is 3.3 volts. Oh, I guess it has to be on, who knew? Oh, there it is on the multimeter. Cool, so let's see if that will power the Bluetooth device. All right, so I've hooked up the iPod breakout, the 3.3 volt line here to simulate the battery. So let's see if the Bluetooth device will connect, stealing the iPad's power. Ah, come on baby, connect. Not to be confused with the Microsoft product. Okay, there we go. All right, so we know we can steal the 3.3 volt power off a device. So next I'm going to try and uh, hook up this TXRX line, see if that does anything. So here's how I think I want to tackle this. You put this into your iPhone, and look how slim this got. This could go right here. So instead of putting the iPhone into a cradle, you basically would just clip, clip two things onto either end of it. It'd be very minimalistic. And then we use some of these thin six millimeter tack switches to create our button array. So we'll have our eight buttons over here and then our joystick over here. And to hold the joystick in place, we can make a clip that uses the headphone jack. Now, I don't think I actually need this green pod breakout thing because I can, I can handle this soldering. So I'm going to desolder this so I just have the plug and I'm going to attach the plug to the blue part just to make the circuit. And then once I have this together, I can design a case for it. Social media is huge right now, but when you're constantly modding, watching old episodes of Storage Wars, or playing pinball like I am, it's important to maximize the efficiency of your posting, tweeting, tagging, and poking. Now, you can stay up to speed on the latest and greatest in the engineering world by following Element 14 on today's hottest social media websites. Enjoy highlights of popular community content, be the first to see the Ben Hex Show episodes and trailers, get the inside scoop on specials and giveaways, including some that are exclusive to Facebook and Twitter, and take part in any online event and webinar, no matter where you are in the world. Fans and followers of Element 14 can also view product demos, training videos, and feature announcements on YouTube or answer brain teaser trivia questions. Also, be sure to search for element14.com on LinkedIn and Google Plus to widen your social media experience. And let's not forget the community at element14.com itself, the ultimate tool for engineers. Connect with experts and peers, share blogs and ideas, access to exclusive video, test new products, and much, much more. When you're looking to be inspired by the latest ideas and innovations, start by visiting element14.com today. And now, back to the show. All right, so I broke down the uh, connector and attached it directly to the Bluetooth controller. And I also figured why not add a mini USB port? Again, you just go online, look up iPhone pinout, and you can find all the connections. Yep, so there we go. It's connected. So uh, what I'm gonna do next, I mean, this is an iPod touch, but we're gonna do this for the phone, is I'm going to design the little button thing here for your finger, where you can push the eight buttons, and then on this side, there'll be the, uh, the D-pad. So now it's onto the computer drawing. Okay, now we're gonna laser out the pieces to make the uh, button pads. So this is my new Epilog laser engraver. Let's fire this up. We'll do its Z initialization. Ah, so here's some main pieces that'll create the bulk of the side of the case. Let's pop these out. Gee, too bad we don't have smell of vision so you could smell this. <laughs> oh well. 
So this is just like Bones, your favorite show. This is where the buttons go. Yeah, that's roughly it. So that's the button side of it. Okay, so I've got four buttons drawn up in SketchUp. So now I'm going to export these as an STL and then we can 3D print them. So I've been using a program lately called uh, Pronterface, which uh, is another variation of Print Run. And the firmware here is Sprinter. So we've actually got the 3D printer working pretty good. So what happens is we're gonna load an STL file, which is the buttons, and it's gonna slice it up and then figure out the G code, which we'll then send to the printer. In the meantime, the printer is um, heating up the extrusion head is heating up, and then we've also got this um, heated bed platform, which allows the first layer to stick and, uh, you know, give you a good start when you print. And this is my Z plate. You Z it first, and then you make sure it's extruding. Okay, now it's extruding well. It means it's primed and ready to go. And then once it's extruding well, you start printing as soon as you can. Take these buns out of the oven. Yeah, yeah. Should work out. Gotta let the uh, heating surface cool down a little bit because when you're if you remove them too soon, they'll deform. Okay, let's see if the buttons fit. Nope, they don't quite fit through. I think that's because the machine still needs a little bit of calibrating. It prints things slightly too large, which means I have to change the number of steps in the X and Y motors. But uh, for now, I'll just uh, kind of cheat these down a little smaller so they'll fit. So I, I can just reprint them. It's not a big deal. All right, here are the 3D printed buttons in place. Let's put this together. Yeah, they work okay, but see, this is a... Uh, problem with 3D printing is not always as consistent as you might need. Some of these don't quite click all the way because of the varying distances. So what I think I'll do, I mean it was fun to try these on the 3D printer, but I think I'll actually laser some uh, discs instead. That way I can have a thinner back to them. So I'll do that next. Okay, so I lasered some buttons and now I'm actually able to put the uh, Bluetooth codes on them too. So put these in. Yeah. I think these will work a lot better. See, the advantage here is we can use a thin piece of plastic for the backing, that way it's consistent and we know that everything will fit. So I'll get these painted and then we'll start working on the other side of the unit, which will be the D-pad. All right, so here's the parts for the D-pad section. We've got the top shell, the bottom shell. The bottom shell has a basically a dummy headphone jack in it, just to give it some mechanical connection to the iPhone. So we'll put the buttons in as well, but basically it'll go in like this. So see, that'll hold in right there. So I'll get this wired up and then we can, uh, we can test everything. So we're gonna get ready to do the final wiring here. Again, it's very important to make sure that we can take this apart. So we look at the length of this cable and make sure that it's long enough to get this plug here, but not be too tight. There's basically needs to be some slack. So we'll glue that in place, make sure it's Got enough slack, which would be right about there, I think. Oh, hot glue, our dear friend and benefactor. This only hurts a little. It only hurts when I breathe. <clears throat> okay, anyway. So then. Okay. So then we'll wire this to our D-pad control and we'll be ready to rock. All right, here it is. It's got both halves, so let's plug it in. We had to find a uh, iCade compatible game. Um, again, there's not a whole heck of a lot of them, but at least it's some sort of standard that we can use. Oh, God, <laughs> I keep forgetting what to do. This game is weird. Oh, the pig fell into a pit. <laughs> mm. 
This is my new favorite game. Who needs Skyrim? <laughs> oh, where'd the monkey go? Why would a monkey be riding on a pig? Oh, oh, oh that was close. Well, this is almost as good as they made a game with zombies in it. Oh, a cactus! Oh, fire or something. Well, we did it. <laughs> so there you have it. We took this IK unit and we shrunk it down into like a little clip-on handheld thing. You could also uh, make just like a separate little controller, like a wireless game controller. That way you could use it with your iPhone or whatever. But I thought it'd be kind of cool to build it onto the iPhone. So yeah, there you go. Consumer electronics fun. That's all the time we have for today. In our next episode, well, if you'd like the Xbox 360 Disc Changer Project, you're going to love our lazy man's, or woman's, ultimate winter time, video game playing, beer drinking, football watching project that will blow you away. We'll see you then. Stay tuned at element14.com forward slash TBHS, where you can join the discussion, suggest builds for the show, and even have a chance to win upcoming builds. Remember, you can always email build ideas to benheck at element14.com. Thanks for watching.